Starling some more coins. Yeah. Everyone ready? Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez uh, here with Harris County uh, Sheriff's Office Sergeant Simon Chang with the Vehicular Crimes Division. A very tra tragic situation out here, very difficult. It's a complex scene. Uh, we're searching for a driver whose uh, truck is currently uh, in water, as well as obviously the, the traffic situation here and just uh, a, a lot of uh, fluid parts to this. So uh, we'll do our best to explain uh, the information that we have to date. Uh, and to do that, I'll introduce uh, Sergeant Chang with the Beaker Crimes Division. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Sergeant Simon Chang. That's S-I-M-O-N-C-H-E-N-G. I'm a uh, supervisor with the Harris County Sheriff's Office of Vehicular Crimes Division. Our investigators are on the scene of a commercial motor vehicle crash this morning. This incident happened shortly after uh, 3.30 uh, this morning, the 27th day of June. Uh, in this case, one of a, a sheriff's deputy, one of our DWI units, uh, drove up uh, on a crashed out Chevrolet Cavalier. Uh, this vehicle was facing eastbound in the westbound lanes of the East Freeway. Uh, this area is specifically the approximate 18,900 block of the East Freeway, westbound main lanes over the San Jacinto River. Uh, so the, our deputy finds that the vehicle was crashed out. Uh, she immediately sees that there are no lights present on the vehicle and recognizes it's a traffic hazard. So she gets out to investigate and finds that there are two males standing in the outside shoulder. Uh, there's 18-year-old uh, and 23-year-old black males, and uh, based on their statements, uh, we have gathered that the 18-year-old was driving the Chevy prior to the crash, and the 23-year-old male was the front seat passenger. Uh, they stated that they were going westbound on the main lanes when there was a minor collision with another 18-wheeler that started everything. Uh, the Chevy collided into that 18-wheeler, and uh, the driver lost control and spun out to face eastbound and the westbound lanes. Uh, that 18-wheeler did not stay on the scene uh, as a minor hit and run crash. And then because of that, that left the Chevy uh, disabled in a moving lane of traffic without any lights on. So as our deputy is making contact with the two males in the shoulder, that's when the other 18-wheeler uh, traveled westbound, hit the Chevrolet, caused it to rotate, and then uh, caused that 18-wheeler to go over the protective rail into the San Jacinto River. Uh, right now we see that uh, there's a, a semi-trailer partially submerged inside the water. Uh, we see that the truck tractor is mostly submerged inside the water. There's a, no indication on how many occupants were inside the truck tractor. Uh, we have no indication that the driver has made it out or is still inside the vehicle. And our uh, Sheriff's Office Marine units are on the scene as well as the Coast Guard and uh, we're conducting a full inv investigation into uh, what actually occurred. Uh, the vehicle occupants of the Chevy uh, we're not impaired, and they're cooperating with the investigation. So there was one accident first, basically, and the semi-driver pulls up, and as your deputy is on scene, and the semi-driver just kind of veers off. Yes. Your deputy saw this happen. Yes, our deputy uh, described it as the way it happened, and uh, thankfully she's not hurt. Thankfully the two occupants party to the Chevy are not hurt either. Uh, however, it, uh, she described that it happened very quickly, of course, so it's uh, still hard to piece together what actually happened. And we're going with the driver and passenger statements and the evidence on the roadway for now. Do you know how long you guys are going to be out here? Obviously, large investigation. This is an um, ongoing scene, very large. Right now, all the main lanes are closed because we're still conducting the uh, primary investigation. However, we have a heavy-duty tow service on scene and we will need the services of a crane to help uh, extricate the commercial motor vehicle out of the water. So a conservative estimate would be another three to four hours. But we will uh, try to get at least one lane open as soon as we can. The only marking that I see is on the semi-trailer, and that says Rich Logistics. Uh, so that, that could be an um, uh, operating company that operates the semi-trailer. Is it believed that the driver of the semi is, is there in the truck, is deceased, do we know anything? Without seeing any evidence of who was inside the vehicle prior to the crash, uh, we know that no one has indicated to us that anyone escaped out of the truck tractor. Do you believe so. that the driver is deceased? We have begun the investigation into this as a fatal crash, yes. Okay. Wait, so 
Uh, I'm going to say real quick in, in Spanish, real quick. Uh, estamos aquí en la, en la carretera del East Freeway y Crosby Lynchburg esta mañana como las tres y media. Uh, uno de nuestros oficiales llegó a la escena y encontró que estaba un vehículo que estaba parado sin luces. Se bajó a investigar cuando notó que había dos personas, dos, dos hombres, uno de 23 años y uno de 18 años, que nos indicaron que habían tenido un accidente con otra troca cuando, uh, y la troca huyó de, de la escena. Se quedó ahí, entonces mientras que ya estaba investigando, vino otro camión de 18 llantas le pegó a, a, a ese vehículo y parece tra que, que trató de, de, de navegar, pero saltó, le pegó a la, a la barda que estaba ahí en la hora de la carretera y se cayó al agua en la troca. No vemos señas de vida en este momento, seguimos eh, en la búsqueda de ese conductor o conductores o personas que estaban dentro de la troca, pero en esta mañana no se ve muy bien de que haya sobrevivido el accidente. En eso, por eso estamos aquí en este momento. Uh, esta carretera va a estar cerrada por lo menos por un par de horas. Vamos a tratar de abrir una, una, una línea por lo menos para que haga... En este momento, eh, ¿tienen eh, ustedes eh, esta investigación? ¿Creen que la persona esté muerta? Sí, es lo que pensamos, pero no se ha confirmado todavía. Uh, yes, this morning, a little bit over at 3 a.m., uh, one of our deputies rolled up on what appeared to be a disabled vehicle without lights on the roadway. Uh, we learned from the statements of the two occupants, an 18-year-old driver and a 23-year-old passenger, that there had been an accident just prior where the other driver had fled the scene. Uh, their vehicle was facing oncoming traffic. Uh, things unfolded very quickly when an 18-wheeler uh, uh, going uh, inbound, uh, westbound, struck the vehicle, uh, trying to maneuver, swerved to the right again, striking the guardrail and going into water. That truck is partially submerged at this time. We don't see any signs of life. Uh, so we've got a very full and complex investigation with members from the Coast Guard, uh, the Marine Unit from the Sheriff's Office. We have Crosby Fire Department and Highlands Fire Department. Everybody coordinating on the search. It's still an active search until we know otherwise. Uh, the roadway is probably going to be closed for a couple hours. We will try to come up with a traffic plan to at least open one lane if possible. Uh, but you know, we'll have to advise you on that. So again, very tragic situation. Everybody's uh, obviously very, very shaken by it. Uh, the two occupants and the first vehicle uh, did not have signs of impairment. They have been cooperative with the investigation. In este momento, no, no parece. Estaban bien, no estaban intoxicados ni nada. The question was, with the two initial drivers in the vehicle, would they face any kind of charges? They weren't impaired. They're cooperating. Uh, it appears that they were victims of a previous accident. So at this point, there's no, no charges that are pending at this time. Uh, of course, it, all this is still preliminary. The question was how high it is from the overpass to the water. Uh, depends on where you are on the overpass. It's 20 to 30 feet. 20 to 30 yes. feet. Where he hit, where he blew off the bridge, it's about 20 to 30 feet. Yes, that's our estimate, yes. Okay. All right. How are, how's the 18-year-old, the 23-year-old? Like, they saw this too. Yeah. Did, did you see them? Yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we got to speak with the parties to the Chevy and they uh, cooperated and they appeared uh, pretty shaken up and uh, they, they expressed their condolences uh, regarding the situation. But they co uh, cooperated fully and uh, if anything, we will conduct a follow-up investigation if we need any more questions from them. And their, se their Chevy is the car that's pretty smashed up yeah, right that's now. That's correct, yes. Hard for us to see, obviously. Yes. Yeah. So the hit and run, did they, did they get hit head on? Like what, how? The what way the way the driver and passenger described it to our investigators was uh, the Chevy was in the outside lane and an unknown 18-wheeler truck, tractor, and semi-trailer combination was in the center lane. So the assumption is that the driver's side of the Chevrolet collided with the passenger side of the truck, tractor. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is there any damage to the bridge up here? How long is that going to take to get together? Yes, there is. The, the protective rail uh, atop the barrier is damaged, uh, I'd estimate 15 to 20 feet, uh, but that does not go into the moving lane of traffic. So the bridge is fine? The bridge is fine. Textile crews are also on scene to assess the damage, yes. In the first incident, when the car is impacted by this car, do you have a description of the car? Do we have a description on the, uh, the striking truck, the, commercial, the first one? Uh, no, no tenemos. We don't have a description of the strike, the initial striking uh, 
a commercial truck that struck the vehicle. Vías alternas para que la gente pueda llegar al centro de la ciudad si no es esta. Perdón. Vías alternas. Sí, estamos este uh, moviendo personas que vayan para la el área. The, the alternate roads right now we're saying to go to 90. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Freeway 90. Pueden ir al 90 o 146, I think. Uh, 146. Yeah. So 146 or 90. No en este way. momento. Yeah, there was a chain of events. Look, we have uh, the the best investigators uh, anywhere. The best reconstructionists when it comes to accident scenes. So uh, they'll be very detailed and thorough. We do want to know every piece of, of the entire scene as it unfolded. That will be part of the investigation. Right now, our, our primary focus has been on trying to locate a, a driver, uh, which now is becoming less less likely um, that that he escaped. Uh, so, again, our condolences to everybody impacted by this, uh, but that will be part of it because obviously that was an initial crime that occurred. Uh, there was an accident and someone fled that scene. But, you know, again, those are just from initial statements we received here and, you know, we'll have to corroborate all that information. It's going to be at least a couple hours because We'll, we'll most likely need to get a crane that'll have to come and lift because there's not an easy access point to where the truck is at. Um, and so, you know, it, we're, we're going to try to figure out a, a plan of action to address that as quickly as possible. And we'll work uh, with the media to advise you of, of the closure. Yeah, we, yeah, we don't know what's in the container, uh, but there could be some, some gas fluid in the water and that type of thing. So just as a precaution, they're here as well. Uh, so text our hazmat. Uh, team is here as well, and it's a it's a team effort out here. We don't know what the semi is or anything. No, we don't. We believe it's just uh, we don't believe it's anything toxic or anything like that. It looks like just a box cargo truck. Um, we don't. We haven't been told of any traffic. There still seems to be on this side of of uh, the waterway. It seems that there's still uh, uh, access. So uh, we'll, we'll check and see if it, if it is, but we haven't been told. Any idea how deep the water is? It doesn't seem very deep where it's at, just because, uh, yeah, because you can still see the semi, uh, and it seems to be on its side. So, but probably 10 to 15 feet, more or less. I would like to add that in case anyone has any information about the commercial motor vehicle that uh, started this chain of events, the hit and run crash, please contact the vehicle crimes division. And the phone number is 713-274-7400. Um, we're going to return back to the scene, and then we'll return shortly if we have an update or once we get access to the actual truck to provide. Yes. They, they're already off the scene. Yeah, they they are. Are. You'll say they are from person. Correct. Oh, wait, one more question. Why is it so hard to get access to the truck? Is the water not uh, just, just because of where it's positioned uh, to get a, a, a crane. I mean, we do have a boat right by it, but it's partially submerged in water, so we have, you know, divers there. But to be able to remove it, we're just thinking it's a little bit challenging uh, to position uh, a truck or a heavy-duty truck to pull it out, you know, once uh, they're there. So there's not a, any land right by it. So And it's marshy land. and. I think it's a super fun site as well that's back there. So there's a little bit of complications we're working with. The divers, they can't look in and see if they're... They're, they're, they're working on all that right now. Yeah, yeah. Do you explain why the drivers went located? Yes, 